welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make some cookies. I've been seeing this recipe floating around the internet for at least six months and I didn't believe that it could be a good recipe until I tried it. Because I made these the other day because I didn't want to make these for you until I made sure they were good. It's a three ingredient peanut butter cookie. Technically it's going to be a four ingredient peanut butter cookie because we're going to make a peanut butter blossom out of this. And when I tell you it only has three ingredients, I'm not kidding. It also has no flour, it has no leavening, it has nothing but these three ingredients, and it really works. The other day I made them, and I made them into a peanut butter and jelly thumbprint, and they were very, very awesome. So we're going to get started. I'm going to show you what we're doing. Okay, here we go. Two cups of peanut butter of your choice, creamy, crunchy, it doesn't matter. You could also substitute almond butter or um, cashew butter if you like. It's your, your choice, okay? Two cups of sugar. Nutella. You could use Nutella. I would have to try that first. Yeah. This is a sweet cookie. So when you eat this cookie, that's all you're going to want is a cookie. Um, two cups of sugar, two cups of peanut butter, and two eggs. That's all that goes in here. Now, I also understand, if you are so inclined, you may substitute out cup for cup sugar for xylitol. Um, you are going to render a slightly crispier cookie by doing that, but I have watched a couple of ladies make these with xylitol and they came up to what looked to be a comparable texture, but I will warn you the xylitol, I understand some people have a horrible reaction to that and gives them a little intestinal distress, but um, you know, xylitol is an excellent sugar substitute if you are a diabetic or if you... Um, if you just want to stay away from sugar. So, but where this is, this is sometimes food, Johnny and Janie, so we're not eating these 24 7. And what you'll notice is this will actually start to take on the texture of a cookie dough, even though you have added no flour whatsoever. Okay, that is exactly what you want it to look like. All right, so now what we do is we are just gonna get our cookie scoop. You can make these as large or as small. Ooh, that was your glasses. Okay, I'm gonna make these as large or as small as you like. I'm using a two ounce scoop, which is a tablespoon. Okay. These are not going to spread very much. Here, I'll move this over here. That's probably better. And I'm just going to mash them down just a bit, okay? Yeah, when they come out of the oven, they're going to get the Hershey Kisses. So, what do we have here? 15 cookies? So, I have my oven preheated to 400 degrees those right in there and they're going to bake for 12 to 15 minutes. When they're ready to come out, I'll bring you back and show you what we do next. Okay, we took these out of the oven. Now make sure that you bake these for 10 to 12 minutes, not 12 to 15, okay? And then I took them out of the oven and now I'm just pressing this Hershey Kiss right into the middle. They're nice and soft in the center. The other thing about these cookies is whether you fill them with something or not. Do not immediately remove these from the pan. Let them sit on this pan for 10 minutes before you remove them to a cooling rack, okay? Then you can safely remove them. If you try and move them now, they will break, okay? So they need a little time to set up. I have another pan in here, just like that. And then, um, so we'll have one pan of Hershey Kisses and one pan of plain, and then everybody will be happy. I'm just removing these and my other pan is ready to come out of the oven. I have a handful of dough balls in the bowl that I will bake off shortly, but for all intents and purposes, these are done. Um, and while this batch may have gone a little brown, don't judge, I know that y'all have the same problem, right? You have six different things going on at once. These are these are not burned, they're just a little bit dark, and that's, oh, uh-oh. Oop. What are we gonna do with that one? Hmm. Oh dear. Okay, and then these, this is how they should look. 
okay? This needs to stay on the pan. Um, actually, it needs to go back in the oven for just a few minutes, and we will go ahead and maybe not. I'll let those sit there. I'm going to bake off the others. But like I said, you don't want to move these because, look, if I try and move this now, you see how soft it is? Um, and that's because it's so few ingredients. Sitting on the hot pan is called carryover cooking, and it's going to finish the baking process. So when 10 minutes has passed and the pan has cooled off a bit, all of that residual heat has helped to finish baking off those cookies, and then you can just put them on the rack and let them cool all the way. If they make it that far, because if you have kids in the house, you know as well as I do, that's probably not very likely. So anyway, that is how you're going to make, and I know you're going to make, some of these three or four ingredient peanut butter cookies. Now, three ingredients definitely in the batter. The peanut butter, the sugar, the egg, absolutely makes a perfect filling, uh, or a perfect cookie that tastes like the filling of a peanut butter cup. But um, if you want to make a thumbprint, you would just take the scooped out balls and roll them in your hand a bit, stick your thumb down in there, and fill it with your favorite jam or jelly. I did grape jelly the other day. Um, very tiny, I'm talking like half a teaspoon because it will cook over, okay? And then bake those off and you'll have a nice little thumbprint cookie, you know, because the peanut butter and the sugar kind of forms like a shortbread. And the best part about this is for all my gluten-free viewers, this has absolutely no flour in it. I understand that you're probably going to have to read the ingredients on your peanut butter or you're going to have to make your own peanut butter. You can do this entirely from scratch by making your own peanut butter using, you know, homegrown eggs and maybe even using xylitol if you want to and you have an uber, uber healthy product. Um, today we're just making cookies, all right? so. I hope you give them a try. I hope that you love them. I'll put the simple recipe on my uh, website. That's noreenskitchen.com. Thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. Until next time, I'll see ya.